All right. Well, the FDA has approved another injectable drug for weight loss to compete with the popular drug Ozempic. Uh, this new drug is called Zepbound. It's kind of a fun. That's a fun word to say. Um, it's made by does Eli like a fat Lilly. Injection drug have to have a Z in it. Sorry, but does it does Zempic? it have to have Ozempic? Oz Ozempic. In yeah, it must because it must. Yeah, um, so you want to zap that fat. You want to zap that fat. Well, there's another one that Ozempic. competes with Ozempic. What's it Zep called? Bound. Um, they don't all have a Z. Uh, it's like yeah, it's like Zabruder. It's like the Zabruder Adderall? film. Um, Monjaro. Oh, that's right. So ha that's but Monjaro is well. Okay, Monjaro is Zep bound. So maybe they've just given the, us this because mm. it needed a Z. I don't know. Um, so what we're talking about here is these new injectable drugs where you put a shot in your body once a week. And they're so popular with celebrities. Apparently, Kim Kardashian uses it. I don't know for that for a fact. My sister told me that. Uh, but that's how you get ready for red carpet events is you take this for a while. It is an appetite suppressor mostly. Um, and so it has been popular with mere mortals too. We went over this in June uh, when the Wall Street Journal told us that Big Pharma was competing like mad because this is so stinking profitable. Um, take a look at this. Here is a sales forecast for Ozempic. Uh, it's supposed to just continue to grow precipitously, mostly in the US. Sales in the 16, 18, 20 billion per year. Um, that's close to four billion, 14 billion this year alone. And Ozempic has been approved for children as young as 12. Uh, there is no indication when you read the pharmaceutical black labels for this or the white labels, there's no indication of when you ever get off of this. Once you get on it, you kind of have to stay on it. So what the FDA is saying here is that it's totally okay to start kids at 12 on this lifelong drug uh, because, yeah, wow. $14 billion a year is awesome. <laughs> so let's go over ZepBound because uh, this is the new one that will now be put on the market. So let's start with these two important questions where we always start when the FDA has a new approval. Number one, was it properly trialed? And number two, is it safe? Well, remember this, when we went over the new COVID vaccine just a few weeks ago, I made this handy dandy list of all the priority drug reviews that the FDA has put on the market this year alone. So the RSV vaccines, the two of them were trialed, but both had either priority or fast track. Zerzave was the pill for postpartum depression, fast tracked. Uh, both of the new COVID vaccines, fast tracked. So was uh, Ze Zep bound fast tracked? Yes, it was. Here's the FDA's uh, press release for today. It received priority review and fast track designation for this. Now, why? It's amazing. It's amazing that they didn't use the the obesity uh, ep epidemic as a reason to do emergency use. So I guess we can be glad there. I mean, but essentially they are. Why would they need to yeah. do this fast? Right. Because the obesity epidemic is pretty steady state at about 70 percent of the population in an overweight um, pathology right now. Uh, so I guess given the fact that they're so why does this one have to go faster when there already is two on the market? Why would the FDA give this any priority? You have to wonder what are they doing for us? Well, because of the. The profits they're they're they're, they're going to miss out on all the sweet sweet money if they don't get it fast tracked yes that's right. an emergency right. i for one am, am concerned for them very yeah. concerned that they for might Eli miss out on some of them billions <laughs> right yeah this well and i i want to point out like the fda so there used to be a process that was a complete circle that every drug had to go through in, in order to get approved right and then the pharmaceutical companies complained so they cut that in half so now it's only half a circle that has to go through, but fast track means they only go through half of the half of the circle in order to get the approved. And then emergency use, they don't even have to go through any of the circle, it just gets approved. So that means yeah. there's no studies, that means there's very little data, they just wanna get it out. Well, the two clinical trials done on terzapatide, terzapatide, I'm not sure exactly, I'm gonna say it terzapatide because it's more fun. Um, they were both clinically reviewed, clinical trialed, and they both were peer reviewed. But the clinical trials, as far as I can tell, haven't been fully published. Um, they were done on two groups of obese adults, some with diabetes, some with other weight related health conditions, and some without just uh, met the BMI of obesity. 
And both groups did show weight loss of between 5 and 15 percent after the trials. But the trials were again for terzapatide, which is the active ingredient in ZEP bound. But terzapatide was already approved in Eli Lilly's Monjaro. So it's basically a new label on the same drug. Monjaro is approved for diabetes. Now, Zepbound, same ingredient, is approved for obesity. So basically now they have two opportunities to inject this in people, uh, and it's based on the same clinical trials. Okay. Um, now, the way it works, again, is that it manipulates your hormones to reduce appetite. But is it safe? Well, here is on uh, Zep. Bound's own white label, and it's on the FDA's announcement of this approval today. It says, ZepBound can cause side effects such as nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, abdominal discomfort and pain, injection site reactions, fatigue, hypersensitivity reactions, typically fever and rash, burping, hair loss, and gastro, uh, gras gastroesophageal reflux disease. Also, it is known to cause thyroid C cell tumors in rats. Um, it's unknown whether zip bound causes such tumors, including medullary thyroid cancer in humans. Don't know, but we just thought we'd write it there in case you get it. Also, it shouldn't be well, used in combination with these other things. I mean, that sets them up for some amazing marketing because based on all that, they can say with 100% certainty that you will lose weight. It'll either be with the drug, with the side effects, or with cancer. Right, or with all this vomiting and diarrhea, too. That's another yeah, that's way what I to... Yeah, the side effects, yeah. Yeah, like right, 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 you're, right. You're guaranteed to lose weight. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, possible cancer. So here is the, you know, here's the teeter-totter that you have to consider is, do I want to deal with the obesity right now, or do I want to take this, let that deal with the obesity, and maybe I get cancer later? Um, I, how, would you, how would you weigh those out? I'm just curious because, you know, we know that obesity is related already to all many types of cancer um, and other negative health effects. So are you putting yourself at risk of cancer either way here? <laughs> these are our choices. Now, these side effects are very similar to the side effects of Ozempic. We've been over the, with this recently. Again, you see a lot of the same things, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, people are saying that it also causes really bad cramping. It's messing with your stomach, you guys. Um, also, if you take this for vanity, you may want to consider that uh, you look old, they say, if you take this because it's dehydrating you essentially making your face kind of sag so much so that there's a name for this. Take a look at this article, Ozempic face. <laughs> like you just start to look lifeless and like you're draining all life out of your body, like in the dark crystal. No, thank you. Uh, the rationale for approving this drug though, is that obesity is related to cardiac disease. So if we lower people's obesity, then we lower their risk of cardiac disease. Um, we may give them cancer in the meantime, but that's what we're, you know, doing. We're giving them this devil, devil you choose situation. Um, and again, there's no indication of how patients can ever get off of these, uh, because presumably once you start, you can't get off. Um, but also, well, think, go ahead. Well, and I just want to point out, just think like there are people in board meetings that are like, you know, that's just a risk we're going to have to take to get these profits, guys. If we don't take those risks, we're not going to make these profits and we're heading towards bankruptcy because COVID's down. So it's like they're, they're, they're sitting there thinking this in their minds and justifying it and saying that we have to do this. We have to take these risks with cancer and these side effects to, to pad our pockets. That's the problem yeah. with the for-profit pharmaceutical industry, right? Mm -hmm. if, it's a, if you know your goal... Your goal is not to necessarily do good. Your goal is the bottom line for your shareholders. That's your goal. And how can you fudge data, hide data, keep it hidden, um, you know, well, fast actually, track things through emergency use authorization so you can pod those those, those bottom line profits and screw the people's health. <clears throat> right, but it's well, also on us for buying this idea that obesity is a disease that is outside of our control. And the more we promote these narratives, it's not your fault, it's the food industry's fault, it's, it's toxins, it's, you know, it's outside of your control, you, it's a disorder of your brain, right? Then we're taking control of our health and giving it to somebody else because we can't take it. It's the same thing when we see all of these. That's why now I'm very wary of all of these, like Megan and Harry wanna promote 
mental health, like good mental health, right? What is that telling people is that it's outside of their control. It's not something, it's a disease. You can't help it. But the pharmaceutical companies can, right? The more that we take that power back and say, I am going to fight with the food industry for my own health, and I'm not going to give them the power of pharmacracy, then the less they have the power to sell this to us. But they can do this. Nobody's going to push back because everyone's like, yeah, obesity, it's a disease. Can't help it. Need this drug. Right. Yeah. We've agreed. On, we've agreed on this culturally unless we don't. Well, and I, I'm putting that out here that maybe we shouldn't. Well, it's like the processed food industry. Right. I mean, this is it's a it's a circle that they've created. So they with the processed food and the highly processed food, that industry and actually some of them actually share share money. Right. So they're actually owned by different parent companies that, you know, they make you sick with the processed food and then they sell you the solution with the medications and it's something that's a disease so it's not in your control whether it's alcoholism whether it's uh oh don't uh, get me started on alcoholism as a disease right yeah i mean am i wrong about that like so being fat is a disease now this is I mean, not the definition of disease it's right. not a cellular malfunction right and so we've expanded this definition of disease in and what has it done it's not made anybody better it's made us worse uh, because of the biopharmaceutical complex that continues to say, yeah, poor you, mental health and, and, well, and uh, obesity more, it's, yeah. and alcoholism, it's outside of your control. It also has a lot to do with the corporate structure because these companies are can actually be fined and, and you know, whatever for not going after profits. I mean, that is something they have to do. And when it's something like they're providing something that we absolutely need, they're providing our food, they're providing our medicine, but it's like it... it works against them because we are making them rich by providing things that we need. And so that system is just so flawed because then they're forced to try to make more money off of us while we're trying to just get the things we need to survive. And it's, well, it's just doesn't balance. Right. And so it, and we have this expanding conception of, of the word need, right? We think we mm -hmm. need drugs to com control our o obesity or mental health or yeah, alcoholism or things that are not technically a disease. Uh, so, you know, I want to I want us all to think about how we use those words really carefully. Um, you know, I even like, even heart disease. I almost wonder, you know, you think about heart disease. Well, we know what it comes from. Right. right? Or You know what? Another one really bothers me when people say like, oh, I have PTSD over that. Um, PTSD was only ever supposed to be for Vietnam vets. And it was just about regret over fighting a useless war, but the drug companies latched onto it and they're like, ooh, this is something, we can sell this. And then this idea of lasting trauma is something that has become pharmacized and is very pro profitable for biopharmaceutical companies. And so that's just, it's not a word that I like, not a term I like to use mm -hmm. anymore um, because humans have trauma. That's a natural that's a natural experience of being a human. All of humanity, all of human life is suffering, right? That's right. That's, and so that's what we're here this for. idea that like, to oh, you're traumatized. Yeah. There's a pill for that. It's outside of your control, I think is extremely dangerous. Okay. Let's get back though to um, these injectables because I want to tell you that because they still require needles and nobody loves needles, uh, drug makers are racing to make this in pill form. In fact, Pfizer thought they had something on their hand with lotiglipron, but they had to stop it because it was causing elevated liver enzymes in the clinical trials. So now they said they ended those trials, but instead they'll focus on another one because they've got this obesity pill in the wor works called danugliprapron. <laughs> I didn't say that right. Why do they name these things like this? Who the hell cares? Because uh, they've run out of cool names. Yeah. <laughs> Dan and Nigglepron. Dan I would say, don't, yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to bother to pronounce that. How about that, Pfizer? Um, <laughs> so this is in phase two of clinical trials. Uh, but as popular as these drugs are, there is a chance that they won't be on the market for that much longer because they are getting litigated to high hell. Uh, take a look at this. A woman in Louisiana suing Ozempic maker Novo Nordisk saying that she developed gastroparesis, a slowdown of the emptying of the stomach into the small intestine that led to vomiting and pain. She says she was not warned about this. The drug maker says, yeah, you were warned about this. We knew this and we told you. Eli Lilly also facing this about Monjaro, 
which was just approved in the name of ZepBound. That's what we're talking about right now, but they are facing class action lawsuits about it. So again, take it at your own risk. And I just want to point out that even though I've given you all of these warnings in this report, the mainstream media is not take a look at a just a small collection of headlines about this approval today. They're calling it highly effective, 20% better, great approval, um, you know, with no warnings such as could cause cancer or, or at least causes cancer in rats. Uh, you would think maybe they're paid by Big Pharma for the no, way they're covering this. A, a little cynical. That's a little cynical. <clears throat> this segment brought to you by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360 brought to you by Pfizer. Yeah. All, I mean, all of these segments, all of these news shows are brought to you by the biopharmaceutical industry, of course. And Eli Lilly, we just talked about the other night on the show in relation to the antidepressant story. Yes. Um, who were, <laughs> they, and they were caught um, hiding data from their trials when they knew the adverse events and side effects from those things. They knew that and they held it out of trial and, and kept it behind, you know, kept it behind and they didn't release it. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let us know. Is this something that you think that you would be interested in taking? Would you rather take this injectable um, or deal with obesity in a different way when you know that this could cause cancer? I know you're not a lab rat, uh, but... Is that something that you would like to take a risk on? So let us know in the chat. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.